If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode. This fantastic episode. Of my one of a kind episode. Pump. For the first, I don't know, 40 minutes or so, we do our introductory conversation. Current events. We ease you. Talk. In. First, we talk about American Idol and Shark Tank. Yeah. Is that all scripted? Is it bullshit? Find out. We talk about <laughs> xenoestrogens. Conspiracy. And cleaning products, which we mentioned Thrive Market, because they have a whole section of natural cleaning products that don't give you man boobs. Yeah, let's if, avoid that. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, you will get one month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and free shipping. You basically have nothing to lose. We also talk about pheromones and attractiveness. The new app that's out. Look out. And uh, Justin was admiring my smell. I was. I was huffing you. We were talking about kids and allergies, and then we were uh, talking about my new Viore jacket. Uh, Looking sharp. Viore is also one of our sponsors. If you want... Workout clothes that look fucking awesome and feel Bro, great. Bro, 25% off with them, dude. If you go to Viore Clothing, that's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump, you get a quarter of the price off, 25% Don't off. Don't forget the show notes. Everybody, We get so many inboxes from people in the show notes. There's direct links for all the things that we talk and about. And that's on our website, right? Mindpumpmedia.com. Right, dude. You can go right into the show notes and find it. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, if you're watching a movie with your family, what snacks... Would you eat? Uh, we say probably none, although Justin came up with a fantastic idea this weekend with his kids. Yeah. Gave his kids Organifi Green Juice Popsicle. What a dirty trick. There's a hack yeah. for you. Uh, they are also one of our sponsors. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code Mind Pump, you get a discount. The second question was, what is the best way for someone with adrenal fatigue, aka HPA axis dysfunction, to stay active and keep exercising without further damaging their metabolism. When you're in that state, your body's exhausted, horm- stress hormones all over the place. How do you work out without making that worse? Change your mindset. The next question was, on our recent podcast with Lane Norton, we talked about anabolic fasting, and we all kind of poo-pooed it, said it was a little bit of a BS. We discuss our interpretation of fasting, how it might or might not work for muscle growth and fat loss. I'd also like to say something to Dr. Lane Norton. Try fasting, you fucking hardhead. You'll love it, I promise. Next yeah. question. How do I communicate to my boyfriend? This is what somebody's asking, not me. I don't have a boyfriend. How does this person communicate to the boyfriend? Currently. Not anymore. Because yeah. they're very conservative and alpha male and they don't like to be vulnerable. How does this person get them to open up? We give some of our professional psychology yeah. advice. Is your boyfriend a dick? In this, <laughs> You want to make him into a blubbering fool. In this episode. Also... This month is going crazy. Always one of our most popular promotions. We are giving away access to our private Mind Pump forum with the enrollment of any MAPS bundle. That's $100 in value, man. Now, check this out. If you want to build maximum muscle and strength, get MAPS Anabolic. If you want to be aesthetic, if you want to sculpt your body, shape your body like a bodybuilder or physique competitor or a bikini competitor, you get MAPS Aesthetic. If you want to get fit but functional... Well, that's MAPS performance. And if you want to be a better personal trainer or if you have pain and you want to correct imbalances, get MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro. And we also combine these in various bundles. The MAPS Super Bundle combines most of these for a year's worth of exercise programming. Enroll in any bundle and you'll get the forum for free. This month only at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time! It's time. <laughs> That's oh, pretty good. That, that was, was like a great a, interpretation. That was like if there, Adam bro. and Yoda had a baby. <laughs> 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 I like it. All right, we had eleven reviews this time last week. T-shirt. Whoa, that's one of the worst we've ever. I might need to give people instructions. It's time again. to tell people how to do it. This, Sal. this is what you do: go to your podcast app. Make sure you do it because it's a, it's bit a different. purple button. Click on the app thing. Search for Mind Pump. Even, even if you already are subscribed. That's right. Click on it. Mind Pump's going to come up. You click on the show. Then when the show pops up, there will be a little tab that you can click on when you scroll down a little bit. Yeah, you got to scroll down. Where you can leave a review. And if you leave a great review and we like it, we're going to send you You're a- You're immediately in the running. Badass t-shirt is what you're going to get. 
And this week we have three people who are getting t-shirts. First up is Maddie Lee 61496, Gator Girl Smiley Face, Gator and then Rye Guy One Fit 23 with probably one of the best reviews I've seen for a very long time. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, very very good. We have to read that. Very next time. thoughtful. So, all of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com, send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Honey, My gotta put on that party dress. Dang. Buy me a dance. Buy me a <laughs> That's song. So good. Huh? That's you, so good. Right? I that was like very country twang. I you, think I could do a little country do you guys, twang. Do you guys remember right. William Hung? Yeah. From the, the yes. uh, American Idol? She bang. She bang. I think oh, Adam baby. has more potential than him because yeah. if you think about why William Hung was so good, it's because he was so terrible. He's hung. You're way worse. So I think we have... I'm just kidding. Is that, Enough is, of that. I'm not going to make fun of your voice. Is anymore. that how he got famous? Yeah, he yeah. got an American Idol, and he was one of the you know the rejects or whatever. They say, oh, you suck. Don't well, you... Well, he sucked in such a good way. Yeah. I heard that... It was fun. So I yeah. heard when, they, when they're doing all the auditions, like it's crazy, right? How many they do? They do... I mean, people... They pull them out. They, pull, they pick the ones. Yeah, yeah. They, of course. So they, so they intentionally pick like some really shitty ones, and then they... And, then they pick. I, I heard that they have like ten or so that they all agree on. Like like these are like the ten, yeah. mm-hmm. and then everybody else is like for the drama of the TV show. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. the thing. They must like really play into. I mean, they must come in with their stories already. Like like the, they wrote it all down. Come and on, they the told show, the producer. Well, you produce. You yeah. see. You see when they come walking in. You know, and they tell them or whatever. Like that. I have a yeah. question. Here's an interesting question because you know how if you if you past the the levels or whatever the judges get you to invite you back to the you know the American Idol show or whatever uh-huh. you have to sign a contract that whatever mm. money you make off of your music they get a percentage right that's oh yeah it, right i know i wonder if they make everybody sign that including the shitty people you oh. know what i'm saying oh, like I'm if you sure. get Just anything in case you know God. they they make money off of cuz the thing is like your name and all that like whatever you do from then on out like they're going to have their hands in it that's because true. they're the ones that 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 elevated you and gave you, think, you the platform. I wonder think, if William Hung actually. You had think the I guarantee they took money from him. Wow, you think they fuck him guarantee. like that? Yes, like with I everybody. Don't think I don't think you get fucked. I think they're it's a deal. It's like, like a record company, dude. Yeah. Like they they're they're giving you the platform to come into their system, but then you sign a contract and then they know. make do you all think like money shark, merchandise. Do you think Shark Tank does the same thing? Because sure, I don't course. think they do actually. I think if they pass on, they pass on. I was actually just reading this crazy article on Amazon, dude, and. Have you guys heard of the company, the Ring Security Company? No. Okay. Ring Security? Yeah, Ring Security. So they, Sounds like the, the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Put they, this on and you'll be fine. They just got One acquired. them all. They just got acquired for $1 billion. What the fuck are they? It, so it's it's cool. It's like this doorbell Ring Security. So what it And it's around your entire house, all these sensors. And it's like real time. So as soon as it's a motion sensor. And as soon as someone's walking in front of the house with that, it automatically populates onto your phone. Oh, so you can see huh. what's going on. So you can down. see it, yeah. And then if, like, let's say uh, all the sensors around the house, it just it all starts populating on your phone, and you got real time. You can view what's going on at your door right away. Oh shit! Yeah, I and, want that. And the yeah. light comes on. It's a spotlight comes on right away, and then boom, the camera. So it could be in the middle of the night. It'll light up, and then go right to your phone. And see, then- this is dangerous. Yeah. That's very dangerous because my house was burglarized years ago, and in that state of mind, <laughs> right after you get burglarized, I for sure, if I had a tool like that, would have placed <laughs> it in my house. And somehow designed in a remote controlled booby trap, yeah. so that if I see somebody like walking you up, drop to me, into a pit of sharks. Yeah, like like <laughs> I like I push a button and an axe falls yeah. on their face. You know what I mean? <laughs> Beep! Oh, sorry. You yeah. were trying to you were trying to steal Snakes my what is this, from UPS the sky. Package. What is this? Yeah. A cartoon? Yeah. <laughs> an <laughs> anvil yeah, hits them an in the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Their eyeballs just. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, yeah. when I was a kid, when I would watch cartoons and I'd see the anvil, I was always like, "What is that?" I had no idea yeah, until I, I like, finally saw one. Why do we put up with this murderous rage? You know, <laughs> like uh, it's terrible. Yeah, I thought that was like crazy. Straight though. to murder. They don't even like you know that punch Shark, Shark Tank totally passed on that shit, and the thing ends up selling. They passed it. on that. Yeah, they passed on it. Wow. Yeah, they all they all passed it. One guy uh, made a move on it, but it was almost like a. You know how like sometimes they throw like a disrespectful yeah, offer out there. Right. I'll take fifty percent of your business yeah, for plus- five grand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's probably like- the asshole guy. That, yeah. Yeah, it was it was something like that. But I guess uh, their second round of funding, Richard Branson from Virgin Airlines, he hopped in on it and pushed it. But dude, was- so the the thing with that too is, I think a lot of those guys that come on the show, like they'll they'll just like invest in for like good PR. 
You know, like it makes them look good. Of course, well, some of them. So. Oh yeah, there's yeah. all those are factors. Yeah. All those factors yeah. are factors. Man, are you guys? Were you guys tired this weekend? Did you guys do a lot I after was, our trip. I slept really I hard. Was tired night before last when we got back, but I wasn't as bad this time because I then we had a night where we went to bed. This out of all the trips that we've done so far, I would say for me personally, this was one of the least exhausting ones. Yeah, see, yeah. I, I, maybe because I caught Justin's cold. Thanks, Justin. Hey, by the way, man, you know, but uh, yeah, exhausted. Shouldn't have I didn't crept in my bed. I didn't maybe. do. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know you were awake. Yeah, I didn't do. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't do much this weekend. So so like shitty feeling. And then yesterday, I started getting the throat tickle. You know, and you start to get the the back of your throat. Uh, so I started yes, doing the elderberry. Yes, worst. And uh, uh, you guys were. Did you guys? Were you guys super active or just just normal shit? I, mean, I was not super active at all. I mean, was we working could, on the house. I got a great first real workout in. Like, I mean, it was. Oh this, yeah. Yeah. This Good was. Yeah. This was the first. And, and I know everybody's listening is wanting to know. Like, so I'm documenting it. So I'll post it on my Insta story. Mm. Um, exactly. You're what, almost walking normal now, man. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. You know, when I walk really slow, I I can walk without a limp. But as soon as I start to try and walk fast, it's that it's when I go <laughs> it in. Hurts a yeah, bit. it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. I was talking to Doug this morning, and uh, I don't know if Doug minds if I share. Because, you know, we get back from those trips, even if we go to bed early and stuff, it's just, it's a lot of energy because we're either creating a new program or we're interviewing people or, you know, you, you just have to be on all day, including up until you go to bed because it's not like we all separate at the end, you know, at five o'clock when it's time to go home. We're all in the same house. And so we just work, work, work. And Doug arguably does the probably the most uh, just work, work. Like he's constantly... He's either editing uh, or he's operating the controls or he's, you know, taking notes while we're operating going the off. Controls like it's a rocket ship. I know. <laughs> I made it look like that. I, I did two knobs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I, mean? yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, where do you ever see Doug do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's either it's either it's either two like nipples frequency. or it's yeah. You know, <laughs> but just throw terms. So out I there. talked to Doug and I'm like expecting like, oh yeah, I was so tired, relaxed. He's like, yeah, I cleaned my whole house. I cleaned everything all weekend. So, what? what'd you do? Like spring cleaning or something? Oh, wow. Or is it because you just moved in? No, just moved in. So I had, still had boxes everywhere. So just scrubbed I, the hell out of everything. Or did yeah. you do it by yourself? Or you to hire somebody? No, I had somebody come in, help me out. But I was helping around the the house and putting things away. I got a question for you, actually. Yeah, you've been uh, using. Have you been using the Thrive Market uh, cleaning supplies? Yeah, you know, I bought a bunch of stuff for my own place and I got a bunch of toilet bowl cleaners, some sprays and things like that. I haven't, so I've tried some of their cleaners and in the past, and this is why I'm asking you. How the do past, they work without all the, I mean. Well, that's what I was going to say. In the past, if I use a natural something. You feel like it's of, weaker. Kind it just of. doesn't work as good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, it's fucking made with lemon oil, but I now have <laughs> a stained, you know, toilet. It doesn't <laughs> take the varnish off of things. Yeah. Did you, right. did you, did you notice None any difference in, in the performance? The you know, as far as I can tell, it works just as well as any other commercial brand mm. except it typically smells better and doesn't burn your eyeballs yeah it, that's the so the one which one did i use i use the the dr bronner's soap which is actually i don't know if you guys knew this it's like multi-purpose um and then i have the dis uh, a disinfectant spray or whatever and um no it works just fine so that, i used the one on the oven and it cleaned it just well uh, just as well yeah so. honestly a lot of these cleaners and things i hate using because they they smell like they're killing yeah. you right like so <laughs> many chemicals i feel like i'm getting cancer just using dude them. i just so we did the episode with dr molly maloof right yeah. and i got several messages from people who enjoyed the episode or whatever but the number one thing that people commented on was on her comment on uh, xenoestrogen or endocrine disruptors. Remember, mm. she made that comment. Uh -huh. And we've talked about this before on the show, but I think hers resonates well, so strongly. Well, having a doctor say that's that. right. Yes. You know, because it's a big deal, right? Because she's a doctor. You mean people still don't trust us? Yeah, I guess yeah, exactly. on some areas, right? Yeah. Don't they know we're experts? These on guys every subject. They say it's stuff about everything. But uh, but that's the the one of the the two places I think you'll be exposed to the most amount of endocrine disruptors. So endocrine d disruptors are, or endocrine disruptors. Am I saying it right now? Yeah, I don't know. Endocrine. It's one or the other. Endocrine, endocrine. disruptors. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, is that these are chemicals that will bind to however weakly they do, because they're not strong binders, but they do weakly bind to, or at least they have an affinity for receptors in your body that hormones attach to. And so what happens is your these receptors express themselves as if you have more circulating estrogen or whatever in your system, or it blocks those receptors. So now you get less of an effect because now your normal hormones can't attach to those receptors. And so you get all kinds of weird effects. And a lot of scientists are saying that this may be playing a role in why we're seeing 
uh, you know, changes in kids, hormone shit. Well, men, of course, testosterone levels have been dropping for a while now, decades, four years, 40, excuse me, years. And then with girls, girls are going through puberty, going puberty earlier, earlier huh? and earlier. Yeah. What are you saying Crazy. are the biggest offenders? They're saying the biggest offenders, or some people are saying, well, besides pollution, um, are is pollution really the, one of yeah. the biggest offenders? Oh yeah. I, now I read a study somewhere about like like when you talk about like our smog. Is that what you're talking about when you say pollution? Like yeah, our smog? yeah, 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 yeah. Like I mean, break dust and everything. Well, yeah. when you when you compare it to where it was like in the 80s, it's, oh, it's better. Yeah, it's it way is. better. It is better. But it's still the. A lot of people don't know that, and I think it's important to point oh, that yeah. out. That we've like, made huge cause, cause improvements. Because I know we, we get a lot of the, we get a lot of people that are, are freaking out about. Oh my God, you're driving around a truck like that, or uh, you're doing you know that's yeah, thanks better. to Volkswagen. It's and, like yeah, right, right, and right. Bullshit. <laughs> but we're way better than what we were in the eighties. Way better. Uh, p- things are cleaner for the most part, and you know all that stuff. But uh, the other ones are the products that you apply on your skin, your hair, in your mouth, or cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies are, um, they're regulated differently. And many of them, if you read them, they say like wear a mask, be in a well-ventilated area and wear gloves. Mm. And I don't know very many people that put all those protective things on when they're using those products. So They just don't want you to get high. (laughs) <laughs> it's lose always. all your brain it's like, cells. It's like when they give you like those the medication, you know, like Vicodin and stuff like that says, don't do with alcohol. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Come yeah. on. <laughs> it's the best. That's the <laughs> only way. But anyway, thanks, Adam. Yeah, for we're, that. we're not advocating. Always, good, ad- always yeah. good advice. But yeah, so using the, the these natural products, which one of the things I like about Thrive Market is they have a, a huge selection like of cleaning products, skin products that are you know, on the natural side, like that makes a big impact considering you use these things all the fucking time, like every single day. Yeah. There was a story I read about, and I forgot where I read it, but there was this uh, boy, uh, this, this, uh, it was a blog and this mom's son was getting uh, gynecomastia and he was 12. Now gynecomastia is relatively common in boys as they go through puberty but he wasn't showing any other signs of puberty. And uh, she took him to the doctor and they're trying to figure out what's going on. It was getting kind of bad. So she <clears throat> changed his shampoo. She took away his mm. shampoo and some of his other products. And then the gynecomastia went away. That's her own personal account. So it's not a, a study or whatever, but it was pretty interesting. So, Well, but- speaking about all hormone stuff right now, and we'll transition over to like this pheromone article that I read on this company called Pheromore. It's like P-H-E-R-E-M-O-R. Did you guys see this? No. Uh-uh. So it's like 23andMe meets Tender. What? What? Yes. So they're supposed to match you with like your DNA matchup, saying that they're obviously they're... What do you think about that? Terrible. Right? I think that's... Ter- I think it's bullshit, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's blowing up though right now. It's a big It's a big deal. Sounds and there's like a, a huge gimmick. There's a lot of hype, a hype around it. I don't think there's enough science to tell us. However, let's say they could look at someone's DNA and say, oh, for sure you're going to... Your DNA is going to match well with this person's DNA. What you may find huh. is a f- strong physical attraction, which might not be a good idea if everything else doesn't match. Right. I, <laughs> no, I, I 100%. This is exactly the way my huh. brain started working. It's like, okay, so I could see all of a sudden we have this cr- chemical attraction to Chemistry. this Chemistry. Yeah, yeah, right? But then mentally, because of our history and our past and our uh, things that we're into and stuff like that, we're just not a match whatsoever. So it'll be really interesting to see how they... Think about how many people that's fucked over, right? Where you're super attracted to someone physically. Right. (laughs) It's actually... That's actually more common than you think. A lot of... uh, I think... uh, We were just talking about this this last weekend that a lot of people mistake, I think, love uh, for... Or lust for love. Oh, yeah. You know? And so I could see that where you you start to pair people up because chemically they're supposed to be ideal for each other. But because of their history, their past, how they grew up and their relationships or their lack of relationships or their lack of communication, other factors that have dude nothing to, that has more social dude, a social difference in their, I mean, in how their behavior how sophisticated is this do they like i mean are they going forward looking at like 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 certain um genetic predispositions to like certain diseases and yes, things like that everything and so they're, they're it's it's 20 factoring think, that think in think about 23 and me and combine it with tender they're just it's just another way to, to another dating app basically. Uh, yeah, it's another yeah. dating app, but and I call it bullshit myself yeah. as far as like the effectiveness of it. Yeah. But it's, well, here, here's it's the, interesting though. Yeah, it is, it's, it's very tell, interesting. It's, it's, it's I would taking do it. off, huh? So it's like not it's yeah, not just the uh, Yeah. I would do it if I was single just huh. for shits and giggles, just to see just what to they see. Yeah. What they produce. You know, what if they send a, a, a picture <laughs> of a girl to you and you're like, 
You no. just get like a bunch of trolls. You're like, ah, oh, like, that's what my DNA matches that's my with? pool. Well, the Gross. thing, the thing that I I wonder about though is if if it does every all the other stuff right, just like Tinder or any of those things match you up or dating sites match you up off of forget twenty three. If you just added twenty three and me to that, I would think that that would just that could help the situation. Right? It, it may, you know. But you're it, right. I agree with you that it could also. Dude, here's a deal. Like lust and you know that kind of physical uh, attraction. If you've ever felt it, that's you know, uh, just overwhelming. I think it plays a role in a relationship, but bonding, which lasts much longer, because how long does that last, right? That initial, you know, chemical high that you get from somebody will only last so long. At some point, like all drugs, your body adapts and uh, acclimates and, you know, they don't necessarily provide that same chemical feeling. Now it's bonding, right? In relationships, you have to, you have to have that bonding for a long-term relationship to succeed and that's determined on a lot of shit you know like yeah. how you guys interact with each other and communicate what you do it's for each only other. novel for so long it is i so when i first and i'd never experienced like and maybe you guys can share stories i don't know if you guys ever experienced this but i've never experienced a chemical like i, I don't know how else to explain it a chemical high like i did when i first uh started dating my girlfriend which is you know, thinking back is the only way I would have ever dated her because remember I had just like gotten a divorce. I had just left my home and although we hadn't been happy for a number of years, I was in no way, shape or form in any type of space to try yeah, to you date. Yeah, weren't, you weren't even looking for it. Hell no. Yeah. All I wanted to do was work and take care of my kids. Like I did not want to think about being with anybody at all, period. And I, you know, meet Jessica and it, we start hanging out and I'd never felt this before. Like I would smell her like literally like I was enthralled by just everything and it was overwhelming to the point where we wouldn't sleep like it was I remember thinking we actually had conversations like this the first few months we were together we're like we can't continue there's no way I can keep doing this I can't keep going this way because I'm going to exhaust myself I'm going to get sick there's no way my body can keep doing this because it was such a powerful uh, chemical reaction it was literally like being on drugs like being on an amazing drug but that also could cause you know you to fucking not sleep and not eat and all that other stuff i if you guys ever experienced something like that where you're just like probably not to your level because how many years were you married for again 15 yeah that's like uh what's what is it chris rock who does the whole stand up with uh the or no it's eddie murphy does the cracker analogy right where he talks about like a saltine cracker you were probably starving for such a long time for that and then you got it, it was like the Fucking <laughs> fucking saltine cracker is the best goddamn cracker I've ever had in my life. I don't, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I. I, I see, listen to it. It sounds a lot like. Remember Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton, where they had like you know little vials of blood around their neck and everything. They got like stupid. really crazy with it, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, what, how was it like when you first fell in love with your wife? Was oh it, yeah, no, it, it was, was silly, right? It was cra- well, it it was one of those things where we just like found ourselves hanging out like every single minute and it was like whoa i need to like you know <laughs> go do something over here you know and it was just we just would we couldn't like not hang out you yeah know? it was crazy see katrina katrina has been the first girl that i i had a different type of an attraction that i had never felt before and i can't say that it felt like what you're saying right now there was more of this uh mental connection that i'd never had before with another human being much less a female so that for me was like the and that's where i wonder things like this like how much of the pheromones, the smells, the things like that are that important? I think those go all the way back to primal instincts mm-hmm. for us. But I think that we're so civilized now that there's so many other I, factors that matter. If all we did was fuck each other, eat and kill, yeah. like then I think well, that would be see, the most here's, important. Here's the thing: like I've I've definitely been lustful, uh, you know, for people for sure. But I didn't. It wasn't like I wanted to sleep with Jessica. You know, I, I did. Honest to God, I just wanted to kiss her, which is very strange because yeah. I'm in a situation where, oh shit, I'm free, I'm single. You know, if anything, I'll just randomly sleep with someone. Was my mentality. Um, I didn't even. I just wanted to like make out with her, which was very, very strange. Uh, a very strange feeling. I'd never it was felt like magnetic. Anything. But I, I think what it highlights is it's way more complex than one thing. Yeah, way more complex. Like my, you know, my grandparents basically. You know, especially in those times in Sicily, like you don't date at all. You're not allowed to, especially if you're a girl. What you do is you, your families meet and you say, I want to, I, I want to marry your daughter. And then the parents are like, all right, that's cool. And then they schedule the fucking wedding. And then you, you, you go, you might go for walks with the whole family next to you. You have no time alone. And then you get married. And I, I, my grandparents have this very strong, 
you know, bond as a result. And I know other family, you know, there's other people in my family, you know, older generation like that. So I, I think it's super complicated. Oh, it's way more. Co- I remember my high school sweetheart, like just being infatuated with her smell. Like I like the way she smelled first thing in the like morning. An animal. Yeah. Like an animal. No, literally. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that, that feeling, but we couldn't have been more wrong for each other. Yeah. And, and a lot of it had to do with like how she was raised and how I was raised. And we just did not, but we stayed together and we were off. It was the only relationship where I was off and on like this with a girl. Like I dated for two years solid. And then for the next four of the six, it was like purely chemical. Yeah. It was like, Oh, not with each other. Couldn't resist each other. Get back together. Then not off. And it was like, we kept getting back together because of that, probably that primal instinct of there definitely was this chemical bond between the two of us, but then everything else didn't. It's got to go further than that. Yeah. It's yeah. Kinda, it has to, yeah, yeah. it has to, or else it doesn't. I would a, say that the chemical bond, the, that chemical attraction, as enthralling and fun as it's strong exciting. for sure in the it, beginning. Yeah, and as as addicting as it is, because it can be addicting. It's funny you 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 can you read articles on this where people say they're addicted to that feeling, so that's all they ever chase. Um, but I would I would even venture to say that that plays the smaller, much smaller role. I do now because yeah, we're not uh-huh. animals. I don't think we're. This is where I disagree that we're like this. We're these still these fucking baboons running around. Like we're, <laughs> we're so much more civilized. Bone than crazed that. bamboos. Well, yeah, but, but think baboons. about that. Like if that's your belief that we evolved from that, well then if you go all the way back then, like then that would be totally normal. Then yeah. it wouldn't be this conversation we need to have. Like it, it would like just we have be no reserves. It'd be primal. It yeah. would be you yeah. would want that just that smell that instinct, and you would have. Of to, course. Well, right. look at look at they do studies on. Women Women, and when women are ovulating, they desire uh, or are attracted to men with uh, more outward signs of testosterone. I remember when you shared that. So this is yeah. a very fascinating. Versus study. when they're when they're not ovulating, when they they desire men with less signs of testosterone. And scientists theorize that it's because the higher signs of testosterone, strong genes, lower signs of testosterone, probably going to stick around. So it's like. Get pregnant. So not find really, your dad. the the real reason why like all these men now are, are such bitches are because <laughs> of all the um uh what do you call it uh, um well, birth you know, control. Uh, oh. Women are selecting birth control. Women are, are not selecting high testosterone. That's it. You know, I I speculated on that a while ago. The other thing might be that because testosterone levels can fluctuate depending on your circumstances quite a fucking bit, including your thoughts. Um, and including your, your company. I think it's like if, if men are around a lot of other men and less women, I think testosterone levels tend to go up in some of them. I don't, I'm not quite sure what it, what it was, but I know that they're quite flexible. I'm, it, it could very well be just that high signs, you know, signs of high testosterone are just not desirable. Yeah. And so men are kind of evolving to be more desirable. They're kind of molding into you know, that sort of you know, that loving guy that's like really soft. Well, women play a major role in the, the, the hierarchy ladders of society because they're the, they're the, they're the biggest selectors of mates. It's not men. Men are, men aren't necessarily driving who, who, you know, who they're selecting as much as women are. Women are much more picky. So dude, speaking of women, do you know that there's a direct correlation with women and the height of their high heels with our economy? With our economy, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? what? Yeah, you just they, heard they've this? been doing it. Yeah, they read this. They read this study that they've been doing on the the height of high heels, and the 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 worse our economy is, the higher the average high heel is. Oh. And it peaked in like two thousand and uh, that like makes sense when we had the crash two thousand nine. It peaked at the average high heel was like seven inches high or something. That makes sense. And we're all the way down now to like two inches. And so like, and that's, and they, the theory is that, you know, that it makes them feel good, more power. And during times of when it's down and bad, high heels have actually increased in sales. Yeah. So, and huh. then right now where we're at, like it's down to the average of like two inches and then the like, sne- ah, we can relax sneaker sales for yeah. women are up to like 37, 40%. How bizarre. Isn't that funny? That's weird. Crazy. Well, I know that, I know uh, that along those lines, I know men when they're stressed out are more attracted to women with more curve or higher body fat and when they're less stressed out or more attracted toward uh towards thinner women hmm. and the theory behind that is if you're in a state of stress wait, wait, wait back up okay so so <laughs> if when we're stressed out we're attracted to what thicker thicker women yeah. and but and then when we're not stressed when we're, we're less like, stressed out we're attracted oh, it's funny to more. i would think it'd be the other way around because if i'm stressed out i see like a big girl i think i gotta feed her you know no. it's a lot. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like so that would stress me out more no. <laughs> so, like, i see like a She's real sitting s- angry if right, i'm not right. coming home with the bacon <laughs> yeah, yeah. right so like if i'm broke and things are tight i'm like <laughs> i gotta find me like a little 97 pounder you know what i'm saying uh, they want salads all day uh, <laughs> it's just cheaper yeah. Yeah. no it's, it's because top ramen you know no they think it's because uh if you're a man and you're stressed out your body is feeling like, oh, you know, 
food might be scarce, it might be uh, you know harder to take care of people. So a woman that has more body fat is probably going to survive longer with less food. Mm. So not what you were, that's actually the opposite. Right here. <laughs> but along the lines of what I was thinking. Go to a big girl and be like, listen, I don't got much money, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to eat. You've got lots of storage on your body. So we're just going to so let gonna you show. eat through that. Yeah. Dude, dude. so this, this weekend, uh, I got to share this before I forget. So my sister had an incredible, there's such an incredible process with her kids. I got to share this on the show. So. My sister has now three kids, right? Boy, girl, and then a, a new baby what age, boy, what five age months groups? old. Okay, five months. Yeah, so her oldest, her son is, uh, I want to say seven. Her daughter is five, maybe, or six. And then her youngest now is five months. And her two oldest kids, both severe food allergies, like severe, multiple severe food allergies. Already. Now, her, her husband is got autoimmune issues, had asthma terrible as a kid, uh, you know, had some food allergies as a kid. My sister has some symptoms of autoimmune issues. Um, but uh, so combine those two, then you have her kids who, and, and on, on her husband's side, it, their food allergies, there's a genetic component for sure. My nephew, her oldest, severely, severely like anaphylactic type allergy to all tree nuts to the point where cross-contamination could be deadly um, to, I believe, eggs, to uh, fish, dairy. I think that's all of them. So severe food allergies, multiple. And then her daughter, my niece, I think has two or three, which are really, really bad. And her, and her son also has asthma. So my poor sister is like, and she's, my sister is, my sister Paula, shout out to her, uh, one of my heroes for sure uh, in life. She's my younger sister, but she's one of the strongest people I've ever met. And part of part of why I think she's so strong is she's had to deal with all these different types of challenges. And she, the way she deals with these challenges is she deals with them head on. It doesn't mean she's not stressed out or whatever, but she fucking tackles them. She does research. She talks to doctors. She talks to me. And she she really tries to distill the right information. Now, early on with her son and her daughter, the information was communicated to her was, Avoid at all costs. Avoid common food and uh, food allergies for your kids up until they reach a certain age, because we don't want them to develop a food allergy. And that's what doctors have been saying for a while. Like, don't feed your kid nuts hmm. until they're like two or three or something like that. Like, don't feed your kid some of these things for a while, because they think that that's how the allergies develop and all that other stuff. And they didn't say anything about probiotics or gut health. Or is like that, that because their 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 gut is so sensitive at that young of an age? That and was so just that, more, that more was permeable. Or well, what? that was just the, was the prevailing theory. That was the theory. Yeah. That was the advice that we were getting. Now, studies were coming back from other countries where, for example, in Ethiopia, a common food that you give your child is this like cracker that's made out of nuts, and they give it to kids at like four months old. And of all the countries. And I think it's Ethiopia. I hope I'm, I hope it's the right country that I'm saying. I, I'm, I know it's a country, but I think it's Ethiopia, where nut allergies are non-existent. Non-existent? Like almost non-existent. And they compare it uh -huh. to other countries in the region and other countries, and they find that, oh, shit. And we also have the clean environment hypothesis where uh, you know, scientists have been saying the environment is too clean. Kids are, are, are uh, like we're cleaning their hands too much. We're keeping everything too sterile. There's C-section births, so they're not exposed to the you know, microbiome of the vaginal canal. Mm. We're giving all these antibiotics, and that's what's causing, uh, that's a, playing a major role in all these autoimmune issues. And this seems to be the case because when you look at studies of kids who grow up on farms or kids who have pets, their rate of allergies uh, and autoimmune issues is much lower. So if you have a pet or two in the home, it reduces the risk of your kids significantly of having uh, autoimmune issues if you're in a farm hmm. also so, so if you don't push it pays to be dirty if you don't push your kid in the dirt at least once a week you're not yeah. a good right. parent so so here's what my sister did with her youngest who's who's 5 months old now he she took probiotics while she was pregnant by the way this is not i'm not making this recommendation you have to do your own research cuz this was all experimental she took probiotics while she was pregnant she had a normal birth and when he was born she instructed the doctor to not wash him off right away Mm. to put him on her chest and for her to hold him with afterbirth and whatever uh, for I think an hour or so afterwards. And then they took him and they washed him. Wow. She also gave him these infant probiotics 
Um, yeah, and uh, so that's what she'd be doing, right? What's that chemical where they bond? Uh, Oxytocin. <laughs> that, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's in the in, uh, released after breast that, milk. Right. So she did all that, and I think she did a natural birth, which uh, I think natural birth, birth may play a role just for bonding and all that other stuff. But anyway, um, she had the baby, and she's freaked out because, I mean, when she had her oldest, my nephew, when he was, I don't remember how old he was, two or something, he had some something with nuts in it, mm-hmm. and he had such a terrible reaction, he became... He started appearing lethargic and then was almost non-responsive. And she had to like, she fucking had to like give him emergency, like Benadryl. She's like, she's like, I thought I was losing my son. So it gave her terrible PTSD as a result mm. with both of her kids. So she's super freaked out now with her youngest. And the doctor, check out what the doctor told her because of all this new information. This is over the course of, this is the difference between five years of the information they're telling some parents now. They told my sister my, your son is five months old. We think it's a good idea now to give him some peanut butter. And my sister's like, what? Like, this is, you guys told me yeah. to not do this. And they're like, no. And they're sharing the research with her. And they're like, look, it's new information. It's new research. But some of the evidence is showing that this may be the way to avoid some of these food allergies is by giving them to your child at young ages to see how, the, to, to have their bodies develop uh, or, or not view them as these foreign invaders type of deal. So over the weekend, she took her five month old and she's so scared. She had my aunt over there and she followed the protocol. I remember what it was. It was like, give him a little bit of peanut butter and water, wait 20 minutes, give him a little bit more, wait another 20 minutes and whatever. She was crying. She, she was so been terrified, terrified oh, because man. I mean, if she did that with her son, now he'd die. Like even with an epi shot. Yeah, dude. He, he might die. Right? Damn, that dude, that's gotta be that's scary hardcore. as fuck for her. No reaction. He had no reaction at all. And, she, and this and it's like the, the probability that her third child would have all kinds of food allergies, very high, right? right? No reaction whatsoever. He also has a little bit of eczema, which all of her kids have eczema, but he has the least amount of eczema. He sleeps the best and she thinks it's all of those things you know, that she did. Uh-huh. And, but how fascinating, right? That now the doctors are saying to start introducing these things. And again, check with your doctor. Do not take what I'm saying as advice for your own kid. You know, do your own research. Uh, but how crazy is that? That it's because it's the fucking opposite. I remember she was like, "Oh, I can't give my kids this, that, and the other," because the doctor said it's a bad idea until they're like two this years old. This is just like a conventional hospital. Nothing like um, this is her own private. Yeah, it's her private. No, it's her doctor. Oh, it was her private doctor? Yeah, it's her doctor. Hmm. But how crazy is that? And so I'm reading this article on this that uh, these they are now saying like it's probably. That's probably the main thing, or at least that's what the evidence is showing, is that this this hyper clean... So what they're saying in the article I read, Hmm. it said children need microbes, not antibiotics. And so they're saying things like, yeah, definitely wash your hands when you go to the hospital and if you're around sick people and stuff like that, but like let your kids play in the dirt a little bit. Like don't... This is all stuff like inherently like I... I like I you kind of know like like it's okay it's okay that they get dirty we've done this since we were kids like why is it any different like Mm -hmm. why why not immerse yourself in it and let your body kind of respond accordingly same thing with like you know when they have a fever like kind of let them give them a little bit of a chance to fight it uh until it gets to a point where yeah obviously it's if it's too high we Mm -hmm. want to bring it down Mm -hmm. but give the body a chance to really fight and produce on uh, you know antibodies and whatnot. Yeah, it's it's a it's interesting, right? Because hygiene and the ger- and germ theory saved countless lives. I don't know, a billion worldwide, right. a, billions of lives. Now we're we, leaning you know, so hard on it, right? Like like the fact like when we discovered germs and discovered that you got you know killing them prevents you know infection, all these different things. Like it saved billions of lives, but now we're, we're like our our all out assault on them has caused potentially some some terrible. Uh, side effects. So, uh-huh. so I think they're recommending, like in the in the article, they're like, you know, not everybody can become a farmer, right? right. Let your kids play outside, which kids don't play outside anymore. Well, right? I'm just surprised, like you mentioned, this is from a, a physician that uh, it's not like a functional medicine practitioner or anything. This is like a regular doctor. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it was Who's pretty cool it to, and it's new information. Yeah. And because my sister has two kids who already have severe food allergies, she's like a candidate for this new information. So uh-huh. I don't know if they're, I don't think they're communicating it to everybody. Okay. I think they're like specific people. Let's try this out or whatever. Cause and, it's still see, somewhat experimental. Well, dude, like think about what could go wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
I don't know if you've have you guys For ever sure. been around somebody who's yeah had, somebody had an anaphylactic shot have yeah, you had to have yeah had had to uh, apply the epipen it was scary shit man it's fucking frightening man. I have not it's like a scene out of Pulp Fiction. You just uh, stab it in their heart? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you you remember that? You, yeah. <laughs> I threw that Pulp Fiction joke out. Neither one of you fucking uh, got it. Were you slow this morning or what? Yeah. Huh? You don't remember that part? I or do. What? When yeah. he puts it right in her yeah. Yeah. In her yeah. Volta sticks the fucking like six inch blade into yeah, her it's, heart. No. <laughs> it's messed up. No, classic, man. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but anyway. Hey, you're looking pretty snazzy over there, dude. I like Oh, the, you like this? Yeah, you've been wearing that a lot. You like it, huh? I do. I got a lot of compliments on... On this this weekend, actually, from people, really, uh, the I the, just I just ordered a whole fuck ton of stuff from them. They have so Sal's wearing the Viore, the company that we just recently uh, interviewed the CEO and we're working with right now. And this brand is dope, dude. I mean, the yeah. material it looks really good. Well, the material is super top notch. It's you know as good or better than like Lululemon. So it's it's quality. Oh no, it's it's really and the style, the fit, everything's cool. I got online last night and um. They're, they have like three, four different styles of zip-up hoodies and then regular pullover hoodies that are like the one you're wearing right now and ordered a couple of those. And they have different styles of pants too. So if you like the more like fit, real, real fitted and, and tapered look or you want yeah. just like a loose fit. I love fit. their shorts too, man. I mean, oh. I rock those all weekend when I was working out. And uh, it's just the fit and, the, and the, the lining on the inside feels really good. Like you don't really get a lot of shorts that have like really good lining that like, you know, makes it fit well. I was always a fan of like Lulu and stuff like that, but it just was not geared towards men. Just, a lot, yeah. The selection for I feel men. like it's an after It's a little too. It is. Yeah, That's how yeah. I feel. I feel Fem- like they got, they got so big. It's like, hey, we, we've got enough. We have enough of a marketplace. Yeah, now, these women we? want to buy stuff for their boyfriends. Right, so right. And so up. they just have like this little section for Well, it highlights yeah. the, I feel like it highlights the direction. Uh, I'm not a fashion guy by any sense of the uh, imagination. However, I'm a fitness guy. And what I've noticed throughout the last probably 10 years is that workout clothes have slowly become normal everyday clothes. Oh, yeah. become, it started with Lulu. They've become fashionable. Yeah, Lulu Lemon did that, right? Uh, Where women now wear workout clothes to fucking go out and hang out and it's not a big deal. It makes a lot of sense because who wants to go change all the time? You know, yeah. it's like, I, I just want to wear some clothes, go to the gym, you know, get some lunch, whatever, and well, like for, do it all like back to back. I just don't think, uh, I don't even think people are wearing them to work out half the time. They're just wearing them to, uh, you know, to go no, shopping. No, I would argue that 80% oh, yeah, of totally. Lulu Lemon and Viore wearers are probably just wearing Walking around, and I mean that's what's cool about it is that it's fashionable now. It's in style. You can get away with some jogger sweats and some nice kicks and and look like you're fitted. I I go everywhere. Like that's that what now. I'm saying. So it, it only makes sense that it started with the with like all the, most markets right start with, start women, with women and then yeah now yeah. now now you have them going oh shit men want to wear wear workout clothes too all the time but also not look like. They're fucking unemployed. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> walk around with sweats before Bunch during the day. People are like, people, yeah. oh, it looks like you don't have a job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Here's now some money, it's like, buddy. Exactly. Yeah. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from AK Sufit. If you are watching a movie with family, what snacks would you eat? Mm. This is a this is a tough one because this is a habit of mine that I've been working on for quite some time. I do have this bad habit of when I eating good and plenty. No, oh. no. In fact, I was I've been craving those. I haven't had those in a oh, long yeah. time. I asked for Robert. I just was guessing. Robert hooked me up with some. He brought me some fucking weird chocolate bar. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Yeah, Robert goes. Robert Overs was with us this last weekend. And <laughs> That's he goes, right. He got, he goes to the, the goes to like Seven Eleven or some shit down the store, and he's just like to pick up his fucking Copenhagen. Yeah. And he's like, uh, "Hey, do you guys want anything?" And I'm like, "You know what? We'd already been smoking weed, hanging out already." So I was like in that mood, and I was like, "Hey, you know what? Give me a box of Good and Plenty's if you see them there." Because they're hard to find. Yeah, rarely ever you find them any, anymore. He gets you like a protein bar or something? Yeah, no, it wasn't even that. It was like some fucking chocolate waf- wafer weird bar. Like, Is I'm it a whatchamacallit? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. You he know confused what good and plenty with like... <laughs> yeah. I knew it was something weird. Something yeah, like yeah. that. Can yeah, I just yeah. say real quick? He's okay. He's six foot eight, 300 and, I don't know, 75, 80 pounds. He's a fucking giant. Yeah. He doesn't eat that much. No, you no. out-ate him. That no. is weird. It, it was strange. Well, that it is just, weird. It just confirms what Ben Pakolsky said to you when he corrected you when you made the statement of, 
you know, people, these bodybuilders that are they this have the mass- genetics to be able to eat so much food. Yeah, they have the yeah. genetics to digest it. And Ben was like, no, it's actually quite the opposite is what it is, is that they have the ability to eat less and yeah. still and still maintain. And obviously, Robert is he's supposed to be a big dude. He's right. A fucking massive right. giant. So he's not forcing it. I was so expecting we would need to wheel like a cart of well, food. Dude, you heard him say him. he's he right now. He is at his high school weight. <laughs> What? It's fucking crazy. Well, you see the size of the guys. That's right. Look at the size of his head. He was bouncing people at like 16. Yeah, he's just a so, he's just a giant. He's human yeah, he's being. Massive. But that being said, this is something that I I still struggle with. It's a habit of mine. I like to come home, mm-hmm. turn on a basketball game, put dinner down in front of us and eat. And what I catch myself doing is and it's obvious, right? We talk about this all the time about how distracted we are by all these things is you start to mindless eat. You know, and so I've been trying to like start to incorporate practices like this where I, I, I start portioning my food out smaller and then I eat it and then I kind of wait. And it's like if I'm still hungry after 15, 20 minutes, then I, I can go back and have more. But just not piling on a plate, sitting in front of the TV and then going to town. I think this is the ha- and this is what people do with popcorn and candy and snacks and oh, crackers yeah. and chips. Is like oh, the candy is, is is a big one. I remember, so I take my kids sometimes. I like weigh it out all the time. I'm like, do I get candy this time? Like sometimes they want like you know some Reese's Pieces or something to, to go with the movie. It's that so- association thing and. Um, I, it, it had been like, I, I weighed out based off of like, okay, the day before did, did they have any kind of treat or they have like a soda or whatever, you know? And, and so like, even this weekend I was like, okay, we're going to watch a movie. And I was like, just, I was conflicted because I had already taken them, you know, the day before for ice cream. And, and that was kind of the treat thing that I did. Cause my wife works, you know, during this week. So, um, so I just decided, you know what, this time, no, I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit creative and I'm going to do something a little bit different. And so I decided I, I looked on Organifi's website and they had like a link for making these, uh, these popsicles with the green juice. What? Yeah. So I just like filled well, it up the water. I bet those are good because they got like a minty flavor in. too. Is it just pure green juice? Yeah. Frozen? That's it, man. Is it good? No, nothing added to it. It's good. Did they like it? Yeah, they liked it actually, which I was like, get you the know, fuck out of here. What a great idea. Well, you know what? I, I've blended it on ice before and it's really good. So it's kind of like the same thing. I didn't even think about what that. What a it's great super idea. Easy. You just, yeah, you just freeze it. You put it in the cube kind of tray and then uh, put the sticks in. I bet, you, do that. I bet you the orange juice or the yeah, the orange the gold, gold, the gold, yeah, gold would yeah, be yeah. really good. I'm going to do that. Better, I should have done that because yeah. that has more of kind of a fruity, kind of fruity taste to it. I bet that would be really. That good. is yeah. really f- smart. But I'm it, dude, do it's that. like you know, because like the the candy thing, I get uh, it, it. Just always happens when you're watching a movie. Like you, you want something. Yeah. I mean, it's, you ever it's ask part yourself, of the experience? You, you ever ask yourself why? Yeah, yeah. you've trained yourself. That's that. totally. Yeah, it's yeah, a totally. one. It's, it's a one hundred percent. It's one hundred percent association. You that's been made for you by manufacturers. This of food. this is why I you know and I'm not recommending this as a strategy, but this has been working for me. Is that because I've already created this habit of where we eat in front of the TV a lot? Is that I will portion out my plate, or Katrina does, and it's a very modest serving. And then then we're sitting down, we're watching like the game. And what's cool is that when the plate's finished, and I I, I normally could definitely eat a lot more than that. I'm fine. I don't want to get back up, go to the kitchen, make a play. I'm st- now I'm into the I'm into the game or the end of show, and so then like that's it. You know what I'm saying? I'll eat that and then I'm fine. Where if I bring something that's a you know quote unquote snack to in front of the TV, like oh that's dangerous as fuck. You're fucked. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I'll say this. I'll totally. say this very clearly. The worst, one of the worst things you could do, or one of the worst ways you can eat is in front of a TV, computer, iPad, or phone. One of the worst things you could do because. You are both making or reinforcing a connection you have with entertainment and eating, Mm -hmm. which will forever make it difficult for you to, you know, enjoy entertainment without food. And the second more important thing is if you want to learn how to ignore your body's signals, distract yourself while you eat. I mean, while you're eating is one of the best times to connect to your to food and your body to connect at least the way that food affects your body and to connect your emotional state with your food. And if you want to completely throw that out the window, well, just eat food while you're watching something. Yeah. First off, studies show- Or driving. Or driving, yeah. Yeah. Anytime you're distracted, you know, studies will show pretty conclusively that eating it while distracted will increase the amount of food that you eat. You're, You're less connected to your body. You're less- you're not paying attention to your body's signals. You're not really looking at what you're doing. It's very mindless. I have rarely in my entire life sat down in a quiet room without any distractions and eaten an entire 
family size bag of potato chips. I've done that countless times in front of a TV as a kid. Yeah. Countless. Never do. I mean, imagine this. Imagine how hard it would be to sit down. Maybe not so hard for some people, but think about this. You're alone. You're just chilling and you're just, you're not distracted and you're just going to sit there and eat a whole bag of chips. Much more difficult than if you're watching something on TV for an hour or two oh, hours. hundred <laughs> percent. It's, it is. I think the real answer yeah. is if you're, a, if you're a parent and you're asking this question, I think the strategy would be, you know, the fact that like we all crave that is because we had created bad habits totally. early on. I would be striving to break that habit with my with my children if I had kids. I, I just don't because let my I kids. Because I, I know it's just, oh yeah, right. I, would, I don't let my kids do it. When like a, much, kids, a much better strategy would be let's all have a family dinner together. Let's eat it. at the dinner yeah. table and then let's go, then we'll watch a, a movie That's afterwards. it. What, what I tell my kids is, uh, and rarely, I shouldn't say never, I, sh- I say rarely, because sometimes we'll do it together because it's fun, of course. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, you know, I don't want to be a killjoy. But most of the time, if my kids are like, oh, you know, I want to eat something, I'm hungry, and they're watching TV, I'll say, okay, turn the TV off and come sit at the table, and I'll bring you some food. Nine out of ten times, they're like, eh, never mind. I don't want it, you know what I mean? So it's like, you weren't really fucking hungry. You were just yeah. you were just watching TV and you and want to distract yourself while you ate something. Right. And I know. <clears throat> I felt the same thing. So I'd say one of the worst things you could do for yourself with nutrition, for you and your family, is to make that a habit, you know? Because um, I know, listen, there's family. So when I was a kid... We would do this sometimes. We would eat dinner while we're, or not dinner, excuse me. We would, we would watch TV while snacking. But when we were eating dinner, my dad was like, no, the TV t- is off. I know families the opposite. A lot of families, they do not do any meal without TV at all. Right. And so, you know, this is, you're creating these habits in your kids and they're going to grow up and do the same thing with their kids. Turn everything off. If we're going to eat, we're just going to sit here and eat. And if you want to talk or you want to whatever, then we talk to the people around us because it creates better habits and better relationships with food than just being distracted. I agree. Next question is from Mitra Grace. What is the best way for someone with adrenal fatigue to stay active and keep exercising without further damaging their metabolism or adrenal glands? So I'll tell you guys why I picked this question. Not because I'm necessarily going to answer uh, what this individual is saying, but because I want to address the actual question itself and how challenging it is to, uh, to, to deal with this kind of individual, which is most people. So I'm not picking on you, Mitra Grace. This is how most people are. And what they'll say is, hey, I have X health issue, but I don't want to lose my gains and I want to get leaner and I want to get right. fit. How do I do There's that? some panic there in that question. Yeah. Like here's the deal. If you truly are suffering from HPA axis dysfunction, which is the more accurate way of saying adrenal fatigue, then the, then don't worry about your fitness and fat loss and whatever goals because those are those don't matter. They're inconsequential. If you're unhealthy, you can pretty much fuck those off anyway. Get healthy first because you have to be healthy yeah. before you can start focusing on those things. I'll have people uh, you know, tell me, I have all these hormone issues and I've got terrible sleep, but I want to lose weight. And it's like, well, step one is get healthy and we're not even going to look at weight loss until we can get healthy first. Because if we focus on the weight loss, w- either while we're fo- focusing on your health or instead of your health, you're going to end up in a worse uh, situation. So my advice to you is to address your HPA axis dysfunction primarily and forget about anything that has to do with uh, getting more fit or whatever. Now, as a, as a side effect of addressing your health issue, you're probably going to be more fit and you'll probably, you know, because all of this includes food and all that stuff, right? You're probably going to naturally get leaner anyway. But don't use that as your motivation because that's going to push you uh, in the wrong direction. Well, I have something to add to that too. I I, I had um, God one of our forum, or one of our longtime forum members, Julie. Shout out to her. I, when I first met her, this is what she was concerned that she was suffering from. And I met her at an Orange Theory class, and the first thing I said to her is like, "This is not an ideal place for you if this is potentially what you're suffering from." Which is why we see her do these major walks all the time. And so I would tell a client like this that's concerned about you know not putting on a bunch of bad weight while trying to get themselves healthy and address this p- potential issue is to focus on neat is is don't focus so much on intense exercise where you're trying to get a sweat and train really hard strength train and walk a lot 
You know what I'm saying? And and walk a lot. Don't turn it into this you got to you got to pound it and you got to burn a ton of calories. Like just move move more throughout your day and focus more on a strength training program where like a, you're running like a maps two to three times a week like maps anabolic. To me that would be the advice that I would give someone like this. Uh, but right Sal's right on with the that should not be your the way you look and all, all, all the the goals that you have as far as uh, training is concerned is less important to getting yourself healthy and fixing what's going on because otherwise no matter what you do in the gym right now it's going to be short lived because you're going to get back bro cut. this used to be me i used to i used to do that you know what i mean where i'd be like oh shit i'm getting sick can't miss my workout yeah. uh, or you know uh, my health isn't so good you know how am i going to keep my gains like that's the most important thing and because i wasn't focused primarily on the health aspect of it, I would just make myself worse yeah. every single time. You have to be healthy for shit to work, or at least at the at the at the absolute least, uh you know, you'll 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 get away with it for a very short period of time. But yeah, you need to address your HPA axis dysfunction, which means probably elimination diet, uh focusing on on quality sleep, managing stress. Um, eliminating, you know, uh, like I said, elimination diet, eliminating foods that are going to not make you feel so good and probably reducing a lot of your intense activity For to sure. give your body a chance. And, you know, the, the, the central nervous system, you know, I, I who was it? Jason Phillips that brought this up and I agree with him. I think the central nervous system kind of has a little bit of a memory. So, you know, cause I know I've worked with people like this where they're like, Oh, I've been doing this for three months. I think it's time now to go super hard on my workouts and then they'll go back to their hard workouts and they're right back to where they were before in a very short period right, of time. Right. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. What do you, you know? think what do you think the common client looks like as far as like what what they're doing currently to to be in this situation like for me if I, someone's in this state Yeah, yeah, it's typically somebody who's got a, a lot of stress whether it be at home and family or work. Yeah. Uh doesn't sleep very well trains really fucking hard and then a, a binging and purging type of mentality totally. with with food like totally just 100%. either lots of coffee not much sleep push 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 and then on top of it they're typically attracted to like spin classes yeah. and hit workouts and you know crossfit you know i've had people with a lot of crossfit mm -hmm. so it's it's quite common it's funny when when we had dr molly maloof on and she she was talking about her client with the continual glucose monitor mm -hmm. and how she told her because they were trying to figure out why is your 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 insulin levels doing all this crazy stuff even though your diet seems to be good, and she's like, oh, I wonder if it's your relationship with your husband. All oh, right. And she le this woman left to go on vacation or something, and during that period of time, her insulin levels were much more balanced, and it was completely a result of right. of her lifestyle of, of her, uh, and it had nothing to do with her food. Yeah. You know what I mean? How crazy is that? It's, that affected her like that. It's so crazy. It's insane. Next up, John Wilmoth. On your recent podcast with Lane Norton, there was a brief mention of anabolic fasting. <laughs> Lane and Adam both seemed like it was BS. Could you discuss your interpretation of how it might or might not work or be beneficial long term? It's such a marketing fucking yeah. ploy, dude. It's to, to, to say anabolic in a fasted state is, is like an oxymoron. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. You're catabolic at that point when you're right. not consumed. Your, your body's either anabolic or catabolic, right? It's one or the other. It's not like either right. or, or it's it's not both, or it's not um, anything else but that. So if so, and if you're not feeding the body, it's catabolic, and and you're hoping that it's mostly burning body fat. Yeah, this but, isn't a performance enhancement. That, right. You know, this is just a part of a not health directly, protocol. Right. It, yeah, as indirectly, yeah. After you're done with it, you, know, you get a lot of health performance benefits from it but like it's a totally different mentality than you know the protein you know you're, you're trying to consume um to to maintain gains like this is something that you know you're trying to reset uh you know uh, your immune system you're trying to get like a filtration uh system with the cells like you're you're doing a lot of benefit neurogenesis there's there, there's so many things going on that as a result but um yeah the the adding you know, like uh, th this reminds me. What was the protocol? Is like the BCAs they're trying to add in, yeah. so you don't lose like uh, stupid, you know, muscle. Yeah, it's just a, it's a. The, I know who created this term. Okay, who who came up with it? I also know they they have a supplement company, and I also know that they attach 
BCAAs to the 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 protocol for fasting, which is all crock of shit. It's no different than calling a, a supplement a fat burner. Yeah. You know, there's no such thing as a supplement on the market that actually burns fat. They can get away with marketing that way because it's a hustle, right? Because it speeds up the metabolism, or it creates it creates a more of a calorie burn because your heart rate starts racing because it affects the central nervous system, and so therefore I can say it's a fat burner. But it doesn't really. Yeah, literally- they found a marketing angle where they could add a supplement into this already you know needs nothing protocol right if you want yeah if you want to fucking fast and you want <laughs> the, the the best benefits of it don't eat anything yeah. so here here's the thing like uh, so i'm going to add a little piece to this so i just completed another 72 hour fast i do one every month now and what i've noticed so far is my third one is the first ones i did i did the first one i did because i really wanted just to get my gut health just you know to a point where it's like fucking normal like i'd managed it it was good but i just wanted it to get to a really, really good place. And over the course of the last three months, it's definitely gotten dramatically better to the point where uh, I think if I keep doing this, I may have solved uh, some of my issues. I've also noticed some other stuff though as well. I've noticed that about two or three days after the fast when I'm refeeding- Super sensitive. Energy goes through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> energy's through the roof. My, and I'm fucking lifting like I'm stronger. I feel better. And now- does this mean that fasting's anabolic? No. I think being healthy is anabolic. So yeah. indirectly, can utilize can utilizing fasting ha- help you gain muscle? Well, does fasting improve insulin sensitivity? Yes. Mm-hmm. Does fasting improve uh, you know, markers of inflammation? Yes. Does fasting improve nutrient gut health absorption. and nutrient absorption? Yes. Does it uh, help with uh, protein uh, efficiency of usage? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So indirectly, can fasting be anabolic? I definitely think so. I definitely think so. I wouldn't call it anabolic fasting, though. I wouldn't do it for weight loss either. Fasting is not a diet tool to lose weight or gain muscle. And the reason why, now, can, can it contribute to both of those? Yes. But if you're, if you're approaching fasting with the mentality that I'm doing this to gain muscle or I'm doing this to lose weight, you are going to develop a worse relationship with food and it is going to become... A, a perversion of the actual benefits of fasting to begin with, and you're not going to eventually. It's going to be come a detriment uh, to you because well, of off that. all the points that you made too. I could turn around and I could take the the whole thirty program, which I think is a really cool thing. It's very similar to like an elimination diet, and I could call it the anabolic whole thirty. I can call it the anabolic anything that improves your health. Right, anything that improves your health, uh, arguably can become anabolic sleep can become <laughs> anab- yeah. for real anabolic Sleeping breathing. Hard. Yeah, but the fact that this yeah. one bothers this one bothers me a little more than some of the bullshit that we have out there just because it's scientifically wrong like we you can't when you're in a fasted state like you're not actually anabolic at that time you're right. technically catabolic so to try and make it sound like you created something that hacked the fasting system or fa- the fasting protocol that now it's yeah. anabolic because you've learned to do it just the right amount and then add BCA. That's a bunch of bullshit. Nothing yeah. you're adding at that point matters. Actually, right. adding amino acids while you fast is counter. It is counter productive. Right? Yes. Yeah, because one of the reasons why you're you're benefiting from the fast is your body has no glycogen or protein. And so it rapidly accelerates cell autophagy. Mm-hmm. Now you feed your body a bunch of protein and carbohydrates. They're gonna and break that down. You 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 reduce that. So yeah, and taking amino acids is just, it's just again why they sell amino acids. That's why you know why they do this because you can't sell shit with fasting. No, what can <laughs> I, I do? You can't. Fasting is the it's absence. It's not marketable. Of, yeah, there's nothing you can buy. That or at least there was nothing. You Leave could it buy to our industry, that. though. We called yeah, it with the keto. Right, we yeah. called it with the keto it's diet way back bullshit. when. We called it with the fasting yeah, thing. Stupid. Same thing. Leave it's it to the industry. And I, I've looked up the anabolic fasting diet. It's basically a, a carb cycling type diet. And does carb cycling increase muscle mass? I mean, anecdotally, some people say it does. Maybe through increasing insulin sensitivity. I look. I I'm noticing as a side effect of fasting because I'm getting healthier. My workouts are just much better. But if you're super healthy already. Is fasting, I mean, like I said, you improve your health, you're going to build more muscle. You improve your health, it'll be easier to burn body fat. But, but again- To a certain point, though. Again, doing fasting for building muscle, burning fat is not No. A- no, I mean, you fast when you bulk for that because you notice you're just healthier right. when you do it. And now, what's the side effect of that? Right. You, you probably have an easier time building muscle. But I do want to say this. Uh, y- your health will lead to typically more muscle, less body fat up to a certain point. Up to a certain point, more muscle, less body fat is unhealthy. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Like, if you want to be fucking shredded, yeah, you're not going to get it through optimal health. Optimal health 
will give you a little bit of a buffer, but at some point getting down to 5% body fat means you're going to become less healthy. At right. some point- You're going to have to go against your body yeah, signals. At some point, you're going to have to take anabolics or do something crazy to gain more. Like I weigh 100 and- I'm I'm I gen, I'm a, generally around 190 pounds for my height, and I've determined that that is for me a healthy muscular weight. Can I push my body to 200 to 210 with more muscle if I really push my body and make it a little bit unhealthy? Yeah, uh, in the short term, but then my health will fail, and then I'll, I'll I'll end up losing it anyway, not feeling good. So keep that in mind as well. Like health gives you this great place to be, and then from there, if you want to get super shredded or push your body a little bit more, you can do so, but you develop this nice baseline of where you're going to be. And for the most part, for most of your life, if you're really healthy, you're going to look fucking awesome. So that's the benefit of fasting. It's not anabolic. It's not fat loss. It's health. Next question is from Alice Nasa 32. How do I communicate to my boyfriend who is a very conservative alpha male that it's okay to be vulnerable? I love how you guys are able to talk about your insecurities and would love to get my boyfriend to open up like that. Get him listening mm. to Mind Pump. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I like Justin's input on this because I think. Uh, what? <laughs> this is the hardest for you between, yeah, between the two. How of to us. communicate to my boyfriend who is very concerned. Yeah, how do you communicate to your boyfriend? I advice for that. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like it's it, that, that all is on him. Like it, what he's willing to sort of. Uh, I don't know, like go through, like if he's growth minded at all, um, you know, my angle with it has really been to uh, really try to improve my communication with my partner. And so, um, you know, to, for me to start opening up, it's, it's been, ta- it's taken a lot of work because I mean, the, it's not your nature. It's not. And, and every man that I've sort of looked up to growing up, whether it's my dad or my my, um, my grandpa, you know, especially my grandpa has been very like super macho. My dad, not so much. He's, he's a big softy, but, um, like that's this, I just gravitated towards like more of these like high testosterone, uh, you know, sports like coaches and, and guys that were like very, um, super macho about everything. But I, I think, I I started to soften up when I had kids, obviously. I mean, Mm -hmm. that was just one of those things that just happened. So I can't say, have a kid, you know, that'll solve (laughs) it. I don't want to give that advice. Uh, But don't tell him, go off your birth control. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be terrible. My pup told me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know. I, I just think that like just, Talking, talking to to him about um, certain topics that maybe uh, are sensitive, and just opening up the, that conversation. Look, you're, such a, you're such a dick for dishing it off to Justin first on this. Well, you know, I want to know, know because you look. At, let's be honest. I don't really know how to give advice. You though. and I don't have a tough time talking. Well, yeah. I'm gonna. I think we have a tough time not talking. I agree. So I was gonna ask Justin, who you know has arguably grown. Not even arguments, obvious. Has grown the most in that category since we started the show. I think all of us have. But you and you know, what would you, you say, and I started out. So then, Justin, about. what would you say is what do you think is attributed to your ability in the last four to five years to become more vulnerable and share your insecurities and be okay with those things? Because I absolutely agree with Sal on that that fact. I think we all have. Yeah. What do you think has uh, have been key factors for you to being able to do that? I think, I think as going through the process, just seeing the response uh, I've gotten as far as when I opened up and I I talk about subjects that I'm uncomfortable with. But there pe- it is right there. So then I think that that's what she has to learn to do with him is that there's going to, there's gonna, when there, when you got to be able to recognize moments where he's being vulnerable mm. and you got to make sure you can commend that behavior mm-hmm. or make it be okay with that. Right. And I think that saying that, Oh, I want my alpha male to be more vulnerable and share insecurities. Well, I would, as a partner, I would like look at the things that, well, what am I doing to promote that? What am I doing to help that? Like you're saying like, tell me or be more that's not helping that's it. not going to work yeah. right there's going to be moments where he shares things and this is where i like exercises like reading together at nighttime it would create this dialogue with katrina and i where we would touch on topics that we just normally would not ask each other if we were just having normal conversations so the the reading thing was a game changer i i think i referenced a a little uh, conversation starter game that I thought was really cool. It would have like a sentence on there and, uh-huh. you know, it would require you guys to talk about stuff like that. This allows you to kind of become vulnerable. And then when that person shares something that's 
uh, vulnerable or an insecurity of theirs is making sure that you say something. You've gotten great feedback from the show, yeah. right? So that's where you, it helps for you. Like you say something that might have been something you're very vulnerable about, then all of a sudden you get the flood of DMs being like, oh my God, Justin. Like, oh wow, people actually appreciate that. Right. You know, like I, I think, yeah, it's different because... <laughs> you know the operating system like in the way that i used to talk it was very short and like um you know you don't <laughs> especially when you're around other guys i think too i think that um he may still be hanging out with other guys that are super macho and like like you know are 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 doing things that like you know he's still sort of in that state of mind where it's like i got to i got to like impress my friends and this and that and i don't want any of that you know, vulnerability shit, you know, I don't want any of that. Yeah. Well, I think put, it's put I, out on blast. This is a, but by the way, this, there's a reason for this. Everybody says society, right? Oh, society makes it hard for, well, yeah, but why? Why is society do that? Well, if you look at uh, men and the bonds that men share, one of the things that we need to know about our other men is can we depend on you when shit gets hard? Now, that's not a, that we're not logically, you know, consciously thinking that. This is through evolution. And, all the evidence you need to prove that this is true is look how men treat each other versus the way women treat each other. When men see each other, good friend, especially then the closer you are, the worse this is, by the way. It's not like you, you don't do this to strangers. You just look to your buddies. You fuck with each other terribly. Mm -hmm. Like the, the nicknames that your friends give you <laughs> are really fucking hurtful. Right and, and I mean, they're supposed to be. Like, who I'm not going to. You're, build, you're building a shell. This with? I was reading this in. Uh, we were uh, just discussing rules. this. We were talking about this when we were in Paso Robles. Yeah, like, okay. a lot because it's, it, we just noticed that. Like, like, why do we fuck with each other so much? Like, and why we am appreciate I calling it. you names and it's hilarious. We right? appreciate we, it. Yeah. Look, I had. So one time I went to my friend's restaurant. <laughs> And uh, it was a new restaurant he had just opened, and he's showing me around, and he's introducing me to staff. And he goes, oh, this is John, and this is, you know, this is Sarah, and whatever, and then this is Nine. And we're talking, and, I, and I'm talking to everybody. I'm like, Nine? I'm like, are you German? Because he didn't learn German, and I thought Nine was like a, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know like, what I mean? no, yeah. And he's like, no. And he goes, yeah. I go, well, why do they call you Nine? And he lifts up his hands, and he's missing a finger. <laughs> and this is, this is how guys give each other... Yeah. Nicknames, like yeah. I'm not gonna give you a nickname on the shit that you're cool with. No. I'm gonna call you something you that hit you on your soft yeah. If you're spot. bald, your nickname is Baldy. If you're right. fat, you're Fathead or whatever. Right. And men do this to each other because we're literally testing each other to see how we can handle yeah. difficult situations. Right, dude. I want to know if we're going to war. You're not a pussy, bro. If we're going to war, if I, if I call you bald or small arms or small calves, and you fucking start crying, I don't want you by my exactly. side when we go to battle. Exactly. And so men test each other this way. But the 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 side effect of this is. You then feel like you don't have the space to communicate uh, to your friends in, when you're vulnerable. Now, there's a difference between being vulnerable and whining. And so guys need to know the difference. If you're a whiner, nobody wants to hear a whiner. And that's if you're a guy or a girl. Right. Nobody wants to hear you whine about shit that you're not willing to, to, to make something happen or whatever. But opening up and being honest, this is how you communicate it to your boyfriend. I'll tell you what. If he thinks he's a tough guy and he wants to be like, hold it in, explain to him how... Uh, or how much tougher he is doing the things that are difficult for him because it's true. Because I was, look, I had a little bit of this too when I was younger. Like if you told me that talking and being open, you know, was more tough and I disagreed with you and you said, well, why don't you do it then? I'd have a light bulb that would go off and be like, well, I guess you're right. Like you're right. Like if I'm really tough and resilient, <laughs> I should be able to talk about these things yeah. because I'm too weak to talk about these things. And that may actually get through to him Honestly, where, that's that's that was my angle was just that I'm so uncomfortable with this that I wanted to address it, you know. And mm -hmm. so that was like the growth minded part of it is I think the angle that I lean the hardest on because I hate talking, like especially when it comes to really personal stuff uh, that's going on with me. But with my partner, that's something that I've always really tried to work on uh, specifically, not so much with other people and be open with that. But if if he can start doing that just with you. Um, I would definitely uh, you know, uh, try I would, that angle. I would challenge her to to dig here and ask questions because we may sound like, or at least I may sound like I'm this super vulnerable guy who shares all his insecurities, which I do on the show a lot. But a lot of that's prompted by questions or Sal or Justin digging into me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am not like that at home. I'm not at home. I am not. In fact, Katrina will tell you that I'm like an onion. She's been peeling me back for the last seven years. I am definitely not that person at all. But if you ask me, I'm an open book. So if you get, if you get into me and you say, 
what makes you feel that way, hon? Or why, why does that bother you? Or, you know, what was difficult about that? Or you start asking questions like that, that challenge the way I think. I love to get into that. Like, let's talk about it. Let's, let's, I'll tell you why that bothers me. And then I, yeah. I'll have a story normally to what leads up to that. And I'm totally fine with sharing. But to just like Sal's note, like, I'm not just some pussy who's going around whining all day about how <laughs> difficult life is and I'm insecure about this and I'm scared about that. And I don't, fuck that. That ain't me at all. I'm nothing yeah. like that. Yeah. But I am an open book. If you, if you pry or you ask questions, I will share it. And I think that a lot of men may be like this. And so uh, I think a lot of times partners, just assume they've got this super alpha conservative male. To be honest with you, they're not asking the right questions. Almost every alpha male I had are some of the most insecure or had the most vulnerable dudes I've ever met. They got a lot going on. That's like a shell. Yeah, they buried it. They're they're super alpha yeah. and they they present that way. And I've seen this in male and female situations where they present this ultra confident role yeah. but then when you really dig deep the inside they're this soft little cuddly teddy bear but you just got to be able to get into yeah, and, that and the other thing too is if if you know when you're when you're having a difficult time sometimes it's important to communicate it not because you're whining but just so that people have a little bit of context you know like when i'm when i was going through my divorce i you know I'm, i told you guys a couple times like hey listen i'm having a really tough time right now not because i need hugs and whatever but because I want you guys to have a little context as to why I'm a fucking lump on a log or why I may not be performing the way I can. Mm. Like, man, I'm having a really... And you guys are you know, man enough to understand that. And I do that with my girlfriend too. So communication is very important. Whining, nobody wants to hear whining. Yeah. But you know, something you said earlier, Adam, I think is really important. When he does open up a little bit, even the smallest amount, show him how much you appreciate right. it. That's you know so what important. I mean? Yeah. Be, be, then that'll encourage him. Like <laughs> rather than becoming uncomfortable yourself, you know, when he gets uncomfortable and says something, you know, don't go, maybe not hug him and like rub his head and make him feel like a baby. Cause that <laughs> may actually make him. No, you want a man to feel good. Compliment, yeah. compliment his process of thinking his yeah. law, how smart he is, his logic, things like that. So when he says something that is vulnerable or opening up about insecurities, you know, compliment that, but here's don't, a, here's don't a make him one. feel like a baby or a pussy about it where you hug him and hold him. Or no, some no, shit. You, <laughs> if, you, you might want to be, unless he wants that. Right. But you might want to say something like, wow, um, you, I really, I really admire how strong you are to be able to say that like that to a man is like, fuck yeah. Like I was strong for saying that shit. Yeah. You go up to him and you pat him on his head and like, you know, let me give you some more milk or whatever. He's probably never going to open up again <laughs> <Yeah>. or, <laughs> because, <in> blanket. <laughs> well, because, uh, you know, cause men, we like to feel like we're the ones that are taking care of things. Like that's the way we, you know, we're, we're either wired that way or because we're brought up that way. And if we feel uh, like, you know, unless we're sick, then we like to be baby. That's a totally different. We're supposed story. to be like invincible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a totally different. Well, story. just be glad you have a you know a guy with testosterone still. Ex so, yeah, because most of them don't. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And then then the last the last bit of advice is you know fuck this could not be the guy for you. I think that's the hardest thing to the the pill to swallow is if you're somebody who really enjoys in depth conversations and getting diving into vulnerability and insecurities. Like, man, there's some guys that are still dealing with so much stuff. Like, they, they have a long process ahead of them before they may ever become that person who is vulnerable and shares insecurities. And, you know, you might be at a time in your life that you want that type of communication right now, and he potentially Dude, may not just be there yet. You know, a lot of, that stings a, to think a lot about of that. women say they want really good communication, but but a lot of women also like that yeah. that kind of quiet, you know, mystery a little bit. And and that's a, that's a very it's a stereotype. Yeah. But look, they do studies. Check this out, right? When when there's pictures of women, if a woman is smiling or just has a like a normal stoic face, men will typically rate the smile as more attractive. It's the opposite for men. When women look at pictures of men and they're smiling at the camera versus looking kind of stoic and like, hmm, women are more attracted to the guy who's not smiling. Yeah. So there's definitely a level of, you know, there's a reason there's 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 so many reasons why men tend to have issues with communication. And, you know, again, part of it is, we, you know, we, we found that we're probably more attractive if we're a little bit quiet sometimes, too. So mm -hmm. you have to communicate what you want to him in ways that are effective. Otherwise, he's not going to know. But I, the word that communication for you is not ask him to talk about his insecurities or be vulnerable. It's to ask those questions that potentially will dig into that. You know what I'm saying? So if you you know your man better than anybody else, like if he's got this protective shield that whenever t childhood stories come up or talking about his mother or talking about past relationships or talking about his business right. relationship, you know those areas that are probably difficult, like dig into those areas. You know how I used to get clients to open up sometimes is I would tell, I would make up a story. I tell belly breathe. I, yeah. yeah. Oh God, that's worked a couple times. Yeah. But no, I would I would make up a story. So if I had a client that I suspected 
was having an issue with something, I would make up a story that I thought was very similar to what they were going through. Right, right. Talking about somebody else, but you're really talking yeah, about like, yeah, like, oh, the same uh, exactly. Right. Oh man, let me move. yeah, let me tell you. I had this client who you know was going through this divorce, was very stressed out, and these are some of the things we did. Next thing you know, the person I'm talking to is like, well, that's what I'm going through right now, and I'm like, well, no shit, that's what I, that's what I thought, but <laughs> no, I wanted to open up. That up. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to open yeah. it up. I wanted to you. serve it up to you. Weird. Yeah. 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 So yeah. sometimes you can you can tell stories that maybe give him the the opening to where he can kind of come in and be like, oh, you know what happened to me or whatever. I think it's a great strategy. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, look at go to the app store on your phone and get the Mind Pump Media app. Uh, what you can do on that app is you can actually search for terms or topics, and it'll pull up all the episodes where we cover that particular topic. Because we have almost 800 episodes. That's a lot of hours of talking and information. And if you want to get specific with what you're trying to search for, the Mind Pump app, the Mind Pump Media app is spe- specifically for that, and it's free. You know, I don't listen to a ton of podcasts aside from our own, and uh, I usually even, even when I listen to ours, I kind of fast it's forward. It's true. I always catch you in the car listening to us. Yeah. And I don't fast- fucking lie, bro. You listen to us all the time. Yeah. I listen to ours. <laughs> I probably listen to, I think I listen to us the least. I listen to other podcasts. Pro- well, I don't know. Justin Lee puts I in- listen to quite a bit of podcasts. Yeah, actually. you're always the one that turns me on to either one of Ben's or one of Joe yeah, Rogan's Ben's, that you really Joe's, like. Joe's, Fire yeah. and a Kid. Those are kind of like my go-tos. The one that you told me to check out on uh, Ben Greenfield's podcast, the one with, uh, what's his name? Brad Kearns? Brad Kearns. Uh, oh, the speed, the speed golfer guy? Speed golf, well, I thought which Adam. I didn't know existed. Yeah. Um, but he's a keto athlete, which I always find fascinating because there's a lot of people that say you can't be a good athlete unless you don't eat carbohydrates. Um, and then he talks about how he doubled his testosterone. At yeah. 52 like, years old, 52 bro. 52 years old, which is impressive. kind of interesting. So it's a great episode. I highly recommend you go check it out. Of course, Ben Greenfield has got a great podcast. He's uh, always been a good friend of ours, very gracious when we first met him a couple years ago before we really grew. And- a lot of people don't know this is what motivated me to finally t- steal the juve light from the studio and take it to my house. So this has become like a, a regimen for me. Because you put the red light on the... Yeah, this is every every morning and night. And I, ben was the first person I saw do that. Yeah. I kind of He introduced like, us to that when we were up in uh, Spokane. Right, yeah. but those that have been listening for a long time know what I'm going through right now, which is I've, I'm over six months now, I've had no testosterone, no synthetic testosterone, and my, my testosterone levels are in the floor. And the red sensitive, light. You're sensitive. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the red light therapies. He's helping. a lot this, more hugs these days. Those, I, and I've had a ton of people inbox me that are above the age of 40 plus or also have been in my situation where they took uh, synthetic testosterone maybe for years before and now they're off and they're trying to reboost testosterone levels naturally, which is what I'm going through. This is a great episode for you guys to listen to. I think it's episode like 930, although he doesn't uh, label them episode ben, numbers. Yeah, put some numbers on your yeah, episodes. But it, the title of the episode is Doubling Your Testosterone Levels, and the guest was Brad Kearns. And it's the Ben Greenfield Podcast. Go check it out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.